a certain expectation of all 21-year-olds to have this perception of what they want to do with the rest of their lives. I experience this uh, every single time I'm with my family or my friends. One minute, I'll be told I have my entire life ahead of me, and it's okay to not know my future. And next, as if that prior thing was not even said, I'll be bombarded with questions about how exactly I envision that life that is ahead of me. They cannot believe that I don't have the next 50 years of my life planned out. As if I, a 21-year-old who has never driven on I-95 before, should know what I want to do with the rest of my life. It often feels like there's this impossible expectation for young people to know their future selves before they even have a chance to know their present ones. I personally see this as an illusion, a wrongfully placed expectation in the minds of young people that leads them down this path of external judgments and frustrating futures. If someone is expected to know what they want all the time, there's no room for what I see as healthy confusion, aggravation, and failure. See, if we ask our young people to identify a goal for themselves, they're expected to stick with that goal and see it to the end. Changing your mind, that becomes too difficult. Much easier to stick with the expectations other people have of you. Then, all excuses for change can be avoided. I was stuck in this mindset for most of my freshman year at Fairfield University. I knew I wanted to be an engineer, but I had no idea what that meant. What kind of jobs would I get? What kind of people would I interact with? What kind of future would that shape for me? Mostly, I was just going through the motions simply because I was too afraid to change my mind. As a freshman, all I could see was a future filled with heavy calculus and Newtonian physics. I had no idea how I was supposed to make my mark with F equals MA at my side. But about halfway into my undergraduate career, I realized there was more to engineering than solving complicated motion problems. Engineering, I realized, is one of the most service-oriented careers out there. Think about everything you do in your day that just makes life easier. Your car to get you here, your heating systems to keep you warm, even this microphone I'm using to magnify my voice was the product of an engineer's hard work. But even bigger things like solar panels and pacemakers and seat belts, things that keep you and me healthy and secure, were developed by engineers. Once I realized this, I became fascinated by what engineering had to offer me, and I realized that I was confident telling people about my engineering aspirations when I was asked the infamous question, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? But even still, this question didn't quite settle with me, and I realized what the root of the problem was. We are asking the wrong questions about young people's lives. Young people should not be asked what they want to do with their lives. Rather, I believe it's a question of what one wants out of their lives. See, the difference lies not only in the question, but in the answer. In the first question, the answer the asker seeks is one that is concrete. Someone may want a good paying job, or to live on a boat, or to road trip across America. These are concrete goals we distinctly set for ourselves. But in the second question, the answer becomes more complex. What someone wants out of their lives calls for an act of self-reflection and a real examination of one's perception of true happiness and satisfaction. These goals can usually only be summed up by intangible ideals, such as fame or success or peace of mind. This is what I call our abstract goals and what I believe we are really after in our lives. Now, once I realized this, that we were driven by a specific abstract goal instead of a set of concrete goals, I began to wonder what my abstract goal really was. What was it to, that made me do the things that I wanted to do? So, I believe that all of our abstract goals are partly intuitive, and we're always aiming for them, but may never even know it. And this was especially evident for me. 
I did a bit of self-assessment, and I thought about what my life was like as a child. What were my goals then? I remember distinctly wanting to be a wildlife biologist. I had this grand perception that by saving keystone species, I'd be contributing to both preserving the environment and helping other people. And as I grew older, my motivations shifted, and I looked at distinctly human issues. I became particularly interested in cost-effective methods which would fix issues in the sustainability and medical fields. And once I thought about this, I realized that there was a pattern to the type of goals that I aimed for. What I really wanted out of life was to be of service to others and make an impact on people's lives. And I wanted to do this through my passions for engineering. Now getting there, I knew 100% would be difficult and maybe even impossible. But because I had my abstract goals identified for myself, I could start setting some concrete goals to get me there. And one of the most landmark opportunities for me came my sophomore year in college. My friend pitched the idea of starting a chapter of the Biomedical Engineering Society and pitched me as the co-president. While I was both flattered and nervous about this, I found myself fitting in well with this role, eager to lead a student organization meant for those in my major. But more importantly, I was ready to see what a bioengineer could do for the local community. I wanted to know how my proposed major, one of the stepping stones of my future, would propel me toward my abstract goal. And coincidentally, I found myself engaged in a project that combined engineering and service in one of the most seamless ways possible. My friend discovered this global network called Enable, which connects individuals from around the world to 3D print and build prosthetic arms for those in need in their local communities or abroad. I thought this was an amazing opportunity for our students for two reasons. One, it introduced them to prosthetics, which is a component of bioengineering. And secondly, it showed them what it really meant to engage in service through engineering. This prosthetic arms can cost up to $100,000 and a child needs at least four in their lifetime. This is obviously an enormous expense for something so vital. Financial commitments should never stand in the way of a child's ability to play with their dog or to ride a bicycle. But with Enable, this can be avoided altogether. Two years ago, our club took on the challenge of 3D printing one of these hands ourselves. With the help of Enable and the school's 3D printers, we were able to model our first prosthetic arm. This arm, as you see, can grip and grab basic objects just as any normal hand can. With PLA and some screws and strings, we were able to build this model. And as we go on within the, our years, we want to edit this and make it something that's more of our own so we can one day give it to a child in need in our local community. And this opportunity came this semester, actually. A mother in South Glastonbury, Connecticut, just about an hour from Fairfield, Connecticut, where our university, university is located, reached out to the Enable community. Her three-year-old son had lost his left wrist down and sought aid from the community. And immediately, our chapter jumped on this opportunity to help. We are chosen as fabricators, or ones who 3D print or assemble the prosthetic arm. And while we're still in the early stages and development of communication of this prosthetic, we're very excited to have this opportunity to be able to contribute to someone in our local community. And so, as I've said, this is one of the most landmark opportunities in my, on my way to obtaining my abstract goal. I s believe that everyone can achieve this to some capacity, no matter where they are in life. I believe that as long as we are able to identify our goals and think about the things that have driven us in the past, we can look at the patterns there and think about what our abstract goals may be. For those who may not have identified one yet, think about the things that have, you've done in the past and how that might contribute to shaping your own abstract goal. And for those who have already have a pretty good sense of what their abstract goals are, be mindful of those who don't. Be patient with them and offer your wisdom kindly, but give them the opportunity to be able to identify them, their goal themselves and make sure that they know that they've done it for themselves. So now, 
When someone asks me what I want to do with the rest of my life, I answer by simply rephrasing the question. What I want out of life, you must mean, is to be of service to others and make a difference in people's lives. And I want to do that through my passions for engineering. Because it doesn't matter how I get there. Those concrete goals can, and are meant to, develop and change. What matters is finding an abstract goal, some meaning and purpose for my life, and work toward fulfilling that. Because even if the next 50 years of my life can't be planned out, I have something driving me. Thank you.